Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla, and you have reached my Flosstube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly craft stitch, but also uh, diamond painting a little bit, and other crafts that I'm involved in, and a little bit of life thrown in. Uh, today is my Flosstube number 85. It is Sunday. It is March 14th. I hope all you guys in the U.S. remember to put your clocks forward. Um, I'm a little bit running a little bit late this morning because of that. Um, not in a bad way, but uh, I spent uh, Saturday, Friday night and Saturday at my brother's, um, which I'm now pretty much doing like every other weekend. And um, I was supposed to come home last night and then just like I did two weeks ago, it got to be around like 8.30, 9 o'clock and you know, there was still fun left to be had. You know, there was movies to watch and stitching to do. And I left Baggy with a big bowl of food for the one day I wasn't going to be there. And I was like, you know, I could spend one more night and just go home in the morning and do my video after I get home. So that's what I did. And, you know, it actually works out really well because I don't particularly like driving home at 10 o'clock at night. It's it's a bummer. I mean, it's nice to sleep in my own bed instead of, you know, the sofa. But, um, but I think I like getting up in the morning and, you know, getting up at a normal, my normal time and then driving home, getting ready once I get here and then do my video. But this morning I slept in a, just a teeny bit later than I would normally. Um, actually a teeny bit earlier than I would normally because, you know, so we sprang forward and then I slept in an extra half an hour. So I got home and do my makeup. I'm just running a tiny bit late. It's about 10 o'clock this morning. Um, yeah, 10 o'clock, new time. So hopefully I will get this video up and running and it won't be up too late. Um, it's hit or miss with my videos, guys. If there are days when, you know, it's like getting into the early evening and I haven't posted a video yet, rest assured it's because it's just taking forever to upload to, to YouTube. So, um, yeah, cause I, I pretty much get it going before noon every day. And sometimes it takes like an hour to upload, load, no problem. And sometimes it'll take four or six. <laughs> so anyway, that's just how it is. And I really don't know if I can change that, if there's a way to change it. So anyway, um, hopefully you'll be seeing this early afternoon today. Um, I want to say welcome to anybody who is finding my channel for the first time. I hope that you like what you see, you want to hit like and subscribe and come back every week. And for those of you who do come back every week, thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. And um, it's been a super good thing to have all you guys in my life the last couple weeks. Um, for those of you who are new, uh, I lost my mom at the end of January this year. And so I've had, you know, a couple rough weeks. I, I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit more into feeling sort of like my normal self. Um, that's not to say I don't have my moments of uh, extreme emotion, but um, for the most part, I feel like, you know, I'm starting, starting to get to feeling more normal. I, I miss my mom more than more than words can say, but I'm I'm trying to channel that missing her into good memories and and having good thoughts of of her rather than regret thoughts and stuff like that. Um, I want to give a big thank you shout out to Kathleen Powell for buying me a coffee last week. Um, I do have the buy me a coffee link. Uh, down below in the description box if you're watching this on a computer or your phone. Um, it is, I'm sure you guys are aware this isn't anything new. Uh, channel creators are using that as a way to allow their viewers to give them a little bit of monetary appreciation. Um, it is completely not necessary. It is very much appreciated if you decide to do that. I know a lot of people talk about that they are refusing to monetize their channel for whatever whatever reasons um and uh, you know this is not a huge money making enterprise for me in any way but i do have to say that the little bit of monetization um helps helps in my life helps in being able to not feel quite so bad about buying stuff to show on my channel 
and um, so I have not stopped monetizing. Um, I have a, a put in a, um, I want to say edit and that's not the word, um, but you can, you can um, have a slight bit of control over the kinds of ads that are on your videos. So um, I do not have any political ads that should be coming up and I don't have any uh, get rich quick schemes coming up and I should not have any weight loss videos coming up. Um, so if you see anything like that, um, that, you know, I, can sometimes find to be offensive ads or shouldn't be on my video. And if they are, then, then let me know. Um, I also don't, uh, ever click the button for mineral ads. So, but I know that YouTube can sometimes put them in. Um, so if something weird happens and there's like a ton of ads, please let me know. Um, if there's just one or two, yep, I have it on there and I have, I am monetized. Um, I make about, uh, $20 a month maybe from monetizing my channel. So, you know, it's not bankrolling me by any means. I'm not going to be quitting my job anytime soon. More's the pity. But um, anyway, in addition to that, the buy me a coffee is just, just a little extra help. It's very exciting for me to see it, that somebody sent me that little bit of um, monetary appreciation. So um, it's there if you want to use it then please do. If you do not want to use it, then of course you don't have to. And I love you just as much anyway. Um, but it is there for you. And for me, obviously let's get, let's get real about it. Okay. So all that being said, um, thank you to Kathleen Powell because she did buy me some coffee this week. Um, or fancy floss or fabric or whatever it is that I'm going to use that money for postage when I finally, finally send out my packages that I owe for like so many of you. Um, I know I've been terribly, terribly behind on that. And um, my only excuse is that my life has been a little bit in turmoil lately. So I'm trusting that you guys understand. And so you will get a bit of a uh, Christmas in uh, April kind of thing for my mom's birthday. <laughs> My mom's birthday is April 18th. You guys will get a birthday present for her, from her, from me, for her. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think that's it with that kind of stuff. Um, our weather here, it's actually kind of nice and sunny today, but it's been kind of rainy and, and, um, I don't want to use the word gloomy because I really like it when it's rainy, but last week it, it was kind of rainy off and on. And I think we're going to have some more rain next week as well. So, you know, California needs it. Um, it's another one of those things, though, that when the, the rest of the country is, like, in snow and ice and turmoil and we're having, you know, 70-degree weather, I feel like, you know, I can't relate to the rest of the world. It was the same with, like, the pandemic and everybody's like, we're stuck at home and I was going to work every day and kind of feeling out of it. But, um, it is what it is. So, today, it's... The skies are gray, but the sun is trying to shine through. So we've got clouds and sun at the same time. So it might rain a little bit today, but I don't know. Um, when I turn my head here, I'm, I have a window right there. So that's what I've, I'm looking at. Um, okay, so fun things to talk to you guys about. So as I said, I was at my, um, my brother and sister-in-law's yesterday. And um, I had talked about this a little bit last week. I decided to, um, I do another like once a month series of tasting videos. I get a universal yums box. I started getting it just cause I thought it would be a fun thing to get for myself. And if I was going to get it, I thought, Hey, I'll do tastings, you know, um, they're fun for me to do. And you know, so it's just something else to add a little extra, extra content to my channel. But, um, my uh, six-year-old nephew, Hudson, was watching my videos one night. He gets to watch a little bit of TV, whatever he chooses before bedtime. And one night he was watching um, me because he likes watching my YouTube videos. And um, he was watching, I guess, a tasting video that I did a couple months ago. And I guess he didn't realize that I got the Universal Yums box and they used to get them. So he was familiar with what they were and he came running out. Um, I was on a Zoom call with my brother actually at the time and he came running out. He's like, I love the Universal Yums box. Can I have your leftovers? 
and I was like, hey, you know, I have a box I haven't reviewed yet, I haven't opened, how about I bring it this weekend? and we can open it together and maybe do you want to be in my video and he was like yes yeah. so anyway so I went over there I bought the box and when I got there Reagan also said I want to do your video too now one of the reasons that they stopped getting the box is because Reagan is gluten and dairy free she has some uh really severe food allergies not just like intolerance but um very severe allergies um and so she is now gluten and dairy free and her tummy is much better for that um but it does mean that um they have to be careful with what she eats and you know there's a lot of things that she can't have and although the universal yums box is really good about labeling in like the description um they have like a booklet and it says if things have wheat or soy or dairy um or nuts i think are the things that they do highlight um what that means is that she can't taste that much stuff um so i didn't think she would be interested but no she wanted to do the video with us and she's like i'll just taste what i can taste so we set it up after dinner on friday and um i had a blast i think the kids really enjoyed it too what was funny is uh, my sister-in-law stacy i talk about her all the time on this channel um she was like just off camera stacy it does not want to be filmed um at all i totally respect that um, but she, you know, she's hundred percent involved. She just doesn't want to be in front of the camera at all. So I hundred percent respect that. So she was going to taste and the two kids and my brother was in the living room holding the dog. So the dog didn't bark. And, um, and my oldest nephew Logan was in the living room too. And he was playing a video game or something completely uninterested in the, the Yamas box. So we we're going through it. It was totally fine. Um, Hudson is a kick The people who watched it. I said, he's like, he's total he's a ham and he's funny and he well he's adorable of course I'm just the teeniest bit biased about that but you know he is adorable it's kind of um obvious um he had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the video so he left came back um I think next time we do it I said maybe you should go potty before we start the video just you know make it a little bit better um Anyway, so we were doing the video and uh, we were all tasting and everything and then we got to a um, a chocolate bar that was uh, creme brulee filled. And as I was describing it, all of a sudden we heard this <gasps> from the living room <laughs> because Logan's favorite dessert is creme brulee. So all of a sudden he was like inching over and it's like, you can taste too, you don't have to be on camera. He's like, oh, I can? So then he was standing there and he was tasting too. So I have a feeling that the next box Everybody enjoyed doing this tasting. And honestly, if people want to watch the videos, that's great. If nobody watches the videos, I'm still having fun making them. So that's fine. And as long as the kids want to participate um, and as long as their parents are fine with that, then I had a really great time. Um, so I think that's how we're going to do it from now on. But I have a feeling that next video, Logan is going to be involved too. He's just going to be on the other side of the table or the camera can't see him. Because um, once he tasted that first thing, then um, he did enjoy getting to taste the other stuff too. So, um, I, you know, I had a great time doing it. And if you guys are interested, it's on my channel. I uploaded it yesterday. So go ahead and take a, take a look. And you can see two of my adorable um, niecelings and nephewlings. Um, okay, so I was over there this weekend. We did the tasting. Um... I also, I tried a new craft this week, which I will be showing you in haul. Um, but I know I've talked in the past that um, Re uh, Logan Hudson, okay, how many people have children in their lives or pets in your lives and you can never get the name right the first time? I'm having the worst time with that, especially with Logan and Hudson, because Hudson is just like a Logan mini me. He looks just like <laughs> Logan did. Anyway, and I, I mix up their names all the time, and it's really embarrassing. Anyway, Hudson asked me to make him Mario and Luigi mustaches because he is totally a dress-up king. He loves wearing costumes. He doesn't like regular clothes so much. He likes pajamas that look like superheroes, and he likes real costumes, and that's what he wears um, probably 90% of the time. So uh, Mario and Luigi are two of his very favorite characters and uh, he asked me to make him Mario and Luigi mustaches to wear. And I, my first uh, attempt was I was using needlepoint canvas and I was trying to do turkey stitch and stuff. 
and I really didn't get very far on it. It was kind of difficult on my hand and it just, you know, I kind of set it aside because I wasn't, it wasn't working out the way I wanted. So this past week, <clears throat> I uh, indulged in trying a new hobby and the first thing I did, um, so it's needle felting and I'll show you all that stuff when, um, when I get kind of to the haul portion of the video. Um, I made needle felted mustaches and I brought them over and they turned out so cute. Um, it was fun to do, first of all. Uh, I know I need another hobby like a hole in the head, but to me, you know, it's a fiber and it's needles and so it's all kind of the same thing. Um, you know, anything that is in that fiber and needles and to me it's all one big hobby, you know. Um, Anyway, the mustache just turned out really cute, and I do have a picture posted on Instagram, so if you follow me there, you can go see uh, Hudson in his uh, mustache finery wearing wearing the needle felt of mustaches that I made him. Um, so, and then the other crafty thing that happened over the weekend, uh, Reagan, last night, um, I told you that my mom had several Riolas, uh, like the little mini beginner kits that I had gotten her, um, and... Uh, Reagan, when we went through my mom's stuff, wanted to keep two or three of them, and she pulled one out last night, and she was, she asked her mom and me, you know, can you help me get started on this, and she pretty much remembered how to cross stitch, because I did show her, like, a year and a half ago, um, and she just needed a refresher on how to do, like, the loop start, and then she was off and running, and, uh, was doing great, so, you know, passing on the love of the craft, um, so I'm really happy about that. Okay, so I think that's it for all the preamble stuff. I mean, it's been almost 17 minutes. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys are sick of hearing me talking without seeing anything, but I'm about to show you. Okay, so uh, first, usually I show finishes, and my big finish that I have to show you is not mine. It's Stacy's. I went over there, and I helped her frame it, and I have to say... I am not happy with this framing job. So it has nothing to do with Stacy's stitching. Her stitching is gorgeous. But I think that the frame that we picked out is a little too small. So um, we got like an eight inch round and I think it needs to be slightly bigger. So she ordered a 10 inch that's just gonna have delivered to me and then I will reframe it um, over the next two weeks until I go see them in two weeks, which will be Passover and we'll have a Seder. Um, but here it is. So this is Stacy's very first cross stitch. It's gorgeous. She did such a good job. I'm so proud. And ta-da! So look at those stitches. I mean, we're talking about a very first time cross stitcher here. And she did this in like a month, maybe? I mean, it didn't take her very long at all. And she just... She loved it. It's obvious her stitches are super even and super nice. And I mean, I helped her kit this one up. And then the next two, I kind of helped her kit them up as far as showing her how to do it. And since then, she's I think she's kitted up two more things that she just went on to the websites herself and has ordered stuff and made friends with a designer on Etsy, which I talked to you about. Um, Brian, she's still linked on my my channel but that Etsy seller is making her another pattern that she's interested in um so yeah so she's just hit the ground running with the cross stitch um yeah so this is her very first cross stitch try not to get the ring light in there and I just think it's so gorgeous and I'm so proud of her and I um she ordered the the other frame on Amazon so I'll probably get it tomorrow or Tuesday and then I'll re reframe it and I'll show it to you again next week before I bring it over to her. But yeah, so the, the not great framing, that's my, that's my bad. Um, the stitching, which is gorgeous, is all Stacy. So I'm so proud of her. And I mean, it's just so beautiful. I mean, it, it just like her stitches seriously are just really, really perfect. Um, yeah, I'm really proud. Um, I'm like, I'm like a mama bear whose little baby bear just, you know, went out and climbed its first tree. So I'm, I'm proud and happy. And I'm so glad that I have been able to pass on the love of crafting from my mom, you know, to my sister-in-law 
and it's going down to my niece and it's just it, it it's so such a good thing such a good thing it's funny on the way home today um stacy um it has i think um masters i think she has a masters in uh social work she hasn't ever she doesn't work as a social worker right now um but um one of her mentors, one of the people that she really enjoys uh, is Brene Brown. And she had a CD of, of a lecture that Brene, Brene, Brene Brown did that she said, you know, if I was interested, I could listen to it. And I, so I took it and I've been listening to it in the car. Um, and I was on the, I think it's the second to last CD. There's like six of them in this little lecture series that she did. Um, I think it's from like 2012, I want to say. Um, and in this, towards the end of this lecture, she starts actually talking about being creative and being, and how important being creative and artistic, if you will, um, how important that is in our lives and for us and how like she, as a very type A driven person, wasn't creative for a really long time. And then found that all of the people that are wholehearted is the term that she used, um, that she, she uses, uh, being creative is, is a big part of their lives and that you cannot be fully wholehearted in your life without creativity. So I thought that that was really great to know that, I mean, I've always felt like it was important and a big part of my life, but to know that like the actual research shows that, um, being creative and, and doing, creative type things that you enjoy um, really does help make you a better, more content, more grounded type person. And um, it's really interesting. So if you have any kind of interest in that kind of stuff, I do recommend listening to that um, uh, Brene Brown stuff. But there was a whole section that she was talking about and it was actually this morning as I was just driving home on, on being creative. And you know, it, it, it just kind of tied into everything. Okay, so um, two other little finishes. Um, as I said, I tried the needle felting, and I'll show you all that stuff when I get to haul. Um, so I made the mustaches, and then I thought, well, I'll make one thing for myself. This is completely not an expert thing. It's not that great, but I thought I'd show it to you anyway because it's like, you know, one of my first attempts, and as with any craft, I'll get better as I attempt it more. Um, but I made just a little, a little needle felted shamrock, um, that I can hang on my seasonal tree, which now has, um, green and gold pom poms on it. Right now, the only, uh, stitched pieces are on it are the two beautiful K ornaments that I got at Hanukkah time. So I didn't even do those. So there's nothing on the tree right now that I created. So this will go on it. And then this is kind of a, what is the new thing? A, an, a saff, a start and finish. Um, I did this last Sunday, I think. And it was just, it was like a, an hour long project. So I got this, it's a diamond dots little kit. I got this from one, two, three stitches, just an add on thing. Um, and as I said, I did it in like an hour. And then I just put it on a piece of sticky back with some gold um, duct tape. And I just, I hand twisted this little extra piece of green floss so I could hang it. And um, I did this. Now, one thing that I did do, which actually I thought was a really good idea. I think it looks really pretty too. Um, because that this is not, you know, this is not a full coverage. It's like the little ornament thing. Um, if you've ever done needle, uh, not needle point, um, diamond painting, you'll know that like, there's a, like sometimes a little edge of like the glue, um, like the tape or whatever method they're using to create it. There's sometimes a little edge that is beyond where the, the picture is. And, and also like with round, then you have the sticky that's underneath or between if you're framing something and you're putting it behind glass or if you're sealing it, 
that's not going to matter because it's going to get covered up. But I was just going to do this little ornament thing. And I thought, okay, there's this little sticky edge. It's going to create, it's going to collect dust. It's going to be covered in cat hair in 10 minutes because, you know, it's my apartment. Um, but I had these like micro beads that um, originally I got for doing nail art. Um, but I barely used them and then I've had them. And um, when I was doing the resin stuff, I used them in my resin pieces. Um, but I just poured these gold micro beads over it and they stuck to all of the sticky bits and then I shook it off and they're on there strong now and I think they just add. So definitely I thought that was a good idea and if I do any more of these little sort of ornamenty kits, which I probably will because they were fun or it was fun to do, um, I will use that little trick. So this was my start and finish, my staff for this past week. Okay, other whips. Um, I have gotten into the habit the last few weeks. Stacy and I are diamond painting on over Zoom on Monday nights. Um, she has a block of time, happens on Mondays, uh, early evening after um, she and her three boys eat dinner. Um, and Reagan is at a cheer class. There's a period of time where uh, she has to diamond paint and we've just been diamond painting together online um, over Zoom, which has been fun. So that has kind of turned into my Monday activity. And so I got some more done on this diamond painting. Um, unfortunately, the picture is not very good of it but it's like a hand holding a little pink elephant fairy so that was what I did Monday this week and then I worked on three yeah three other whips this week um, this is the project that I'm doing for Stacy. Um, so this is I got from Etsy. Uh, love for cross stitch on Etsy and the four is a number four. Um, that's the shop I got this from. This home runs on cuddles and caffeine, but I changed the home to this mom um, for Stacy because their home is not caffeine. My brother's caffeine free, but Stacy is a very big coffee drinker and um, big coffee drinker, big mugs. <laughs> and um, and she, she and her kids are like the huggiest people. Um, so yeah, so it totally fits her. It's perfect. And I worked some more on the cuddles. I'm doing all of this with a uh, DMC uh, variegated floss that I just had in my stash. And um, this is the cuddles, it's the back part, so it doesn't look like anything yet, but. Other two projects that I worked on this week. I worked on Chester's Place, which I'm doing as a sal with Amy Sprinklestein Stitches. This is the sal for Grouchy. Um, in sorry, in honor of um her cat Grouchy who passed away on Valentine's Day, and um you know which losing a pet is devastating. So Amy felt like this was a good way to honor him because the proceeds from this chart are going to an animal shelter and the chart's like super cute. Um, I don't know that I ever said that this, this is like a mystery fabric. It's, it's hard to see. I know, well, actually if I hold it back here, you guys can see it's this really very subtle, very pretty green, purple modely fabric and it is an opal. I think it's a 32 count. Um, even weave, I think it's 32. Um, 
it's in the description but I got some more done I moved over and started working on the house a little bit I got this uh, icon done which was really fun to do actually um, and I pulled I, I'm using threads from stash on this I'm using all dental arts so I'm just using threads that are similar to what was charted but I just pulled them from stash And this was a fabric I got from eBay, so it's kind of just a mystery fabric. It was just like, you know, listed as an even weave, hand dyed even weave, and I just think it's really pretty. It's it's a really nice quality, so, um, but I don't think the designer or the, the dyer was listed when I bought it. And then the last whip that I worked on is Madame Chantilly's Cats in the Rain which I'm doing this also with Amy, uh, Sprinkle Steam Stitches. And um, we originally just chose to do this this chart as a style because we both had it and we had been you know, messaging a little bit back and forth on Instagram and stuff. And um, she had showed it in her video. I'm like, hey, I have that chart. Do you want to sell it? And we decided to do it in February and I was doing it as my uh, Be My Own Valentine style. Hey, Peggy. Um, and then, of course, my mom passed, and so we actually added the hashtag um, cats sal for mom. So I'm doing it. Okay, I can see it. Oh, oh, this is my cat in the rain. Although he doesn't ever get to go outside. Okay, can we show the cats in the rain? Can we show it? Okay. He's a little needy on Sundays when I spend Saturday at my brother's, so please forgive him. Okay, okay, enough, enough love for now, okay? Enough, enough, get down, thank you. If you have cats, you know. Okay, so. I just, I don't know what it is about this pattern. I mean, the cats are very simple. They're not, they're not, intricate or anything like that but they are just so adorable and I just I just I work on their little faces and I love it so I finished this guy and I finished her little rain boots and socks um and I started on this cat I've changed the colors a little bit again I pulled colors from stash and I added uh like a couple more grays and stuff so that there was a little bit more of a variation in the colors of the cats um but I am really loving this project so and it's going pretty fast because actually the girl's the big portion and then there's you know the cats over here but um there's nine cats so I've got three completed and one started so then I will have five more to do And that is all of my whips for this week. I don't know if you can hear that noise, but that is Baggy playing with his taco from uh, the Miso Handmade that um, I originally got um, a gift for him at Hanukkah time from one of my viewers and I'm sorry I think I want to say it's Stacy Katz but I'm not sure um but anyway somebody sent me uh, a gift for baggy of kitty tacos um little felt toys from Miso Handmade and I've shown you guys I've bought from them like two two or three more times because he loves them so much and uh, he is now playing and hugging his kitty taco so if you hear that little crinkle noise, that's, that's the taco. Okay. So that was all my whips for this week. Um, so I have a little bit of haul to show you. Um, significantly, I got all this needle felting stuff. So this was one of those wild hairs that you get, you know. Um, I've been looking at needle felting for a while and... So I watched a couple of videos. Well, actually, I should say I, I got the kits first because um, 
because I'm like that, I think I can do anything. And then, you know, occasionally I'll get a craft and be like, I, I, I don't know about this. I still haven't done the ribbon embroidery, so I still have those kits that eventually will get done. But, um, so I got a couple kits just from Amazon. Um, I didn't spend very much. I got, I got the kit. So I thought I would get kits that had, were all inclusive, right? Um, so I got a kit to make this little rabbit. And I got kits, a kit to make these little cats. And this one didn't have any tools. It just had the materials. But this one came with the tools to, like, make the kit. And, you know, it did say it had everything in there. And I thought, oh, great, okay, fine. That's all I need is to get this kit. Well, I mean, it does have instructions, but it's kind of like the instructions where it's like, prepare the wool you know, do the needle felting. It doesn't really tell you how to do it. So I went on to the trusty YouTube and looked up needle felting and watched some videos to figure out how to do this craft. And I think I have, I have an idea of how to do it. That doesn't mean that I have done it or will be able to do it, but um, I have an idea. And then I went and I went back on to Amazon and I got another kit um, kind of like one of those, like, you know, beginner kits. It was like, I think it was $20, um, maybe 25, but you know, it just supposedly had everything in it. It had a bunch of the wools. It had, um, assorted needles, probably not the best quality, but until I know that it's something that I really want to invest in, I don't think it's necessary to spend a lot of money. I'll just get the beginning stuff to try. It's what I did with, with, um, with uh, punch embroidery um that's what i've done with the uh resin um you know i'm not gonna jump in and get like the best tools until i know that i like it so i got um sort of a, a kit of of supplies um this blue container didn't come with it that i actually got this from my mom um, it was in her stuff. I never got these for her, so I, one of her CNA friends must have gotten it for her for all the beading stuff that I got her. Um, and there wasn't a lot of beading stuff left, but um, I took all of that out. And now it has needle felting stuff in it. So, um, so I have, it came, this kit came with all these little different colors of the stuff. And then... As I said, there's all kinds of tools in here. Um, there's like the holder thing for the needles and then uh, sorted needles and um, this scary looking jobby. <laughs> I haven't used that yet. Um, I guess you use this for like a bigger project. Um, and then no, I'm going to stab myself with these. Okay. Um, and then it came with the little finger protection things, which um, the person I was watching, who obviously is, you know, an expert needle felter, who's been doing it for years and years, she's like, I don't use, I don't use these anymore, but um, I do suggest that you use them. And I'm thinking, like, uh-huh, I'm going to use them because, like, these needles are scary looking and you're, like, stabbing. Oh, hold on. Okay. So, there's that. So, it comes with these little leather things and you wear them on your thumb and finger. Because as you're holding the felt and you're stabbing it with these long needles, um, you, they're to protect yourself, obviously, so you don't stab your finger. Um, what was funny, though, is I noticed that when I had these on, because this made me feel like, were, like my finger was injured, I was holding it with this finger. And I kept having to tell myself, like, don't hold it with this finger. That's not going to help you. Um, but anyway, so I tried it out using those little flat things. Um, oh, where's the other? I really think that it, the, the kit that I got 
came with, and now I don't know where I put them. Oh, and the, oh, here it is. And then it comes with like this foam thing, and you can get all different ones, but then obviously I'm just using what came with the two kits. So this came with the rabbit kit, and then when I got the bigger kit, I got this bigger one. And this is what you hold the, the wool roving on and you stab it into this. Um, but the kit also came with these things um, that you can use as kind of like molds or templates. I don't know exactly what you'd use, but like I use this one to make the shamrock. So you put all the loose fibers in here and then you stab it to belt it into, you know, the shape. Does that make, I don't know if that makes sense, but, and I haven't done like a 3D animal, which is what I really want to do, but I thought that doing these little flat things would be a good way to practice and just see what it was. Um, and then I used, um, This one had the mustaches, so that's what I used to make Reagan's Luigi mustache. And then the Mario mustache is like a loopy or curved thing. And they didn't have anything that was exactly like that. So they had these clouds. So I just used this cloud, actually I used it this way, and just didn't fill in this top part. So I used that to make, you know, the other mustache, um, which Hudson did inform me that although he loves them, this isn't correct because there's not enough curves, but he still loves it. Um, but yeah, so I came with, you know, like I can make little flowers, um, you know, they have like Christmassy trees, which I probably wouldn't use, a mushroom, apples. So there's lots of things that I could use if I want to make these little flat things, which I think would work really well excuse me, hearts. I don't know if these are supposed to be poop emojis or if they're supposed to be like whipped cream, but ice creams maybe. Um, but anyway, there's all these things that I can use to put on my, my holiday and seasonal tree. So basically needle felting is you take these loose fibers um, let me pick a color that you can see up good. And I think this is wool. Um, as I said, this was kind of an inexpensive kit, so they could be acrylic. I don't know. But anyway, so you take this loose roving fiber and, you know, like you pull off a lot of it, however much you need, and then you kind of wad it up. And then the needles that you're using are like barbed at the end. And you basically just stab it into this felting, I mean, into the, the wool, you just stab it. And what happens is, is those little barbs knit the fibers together and make it into a solid mass. Um, and I mean, I don't know if that's how they make, like what, felt is like like craft felt if it's done the same way um but oh and then the kits came with little eyes for the little animals so that's kind of cool um so the needles there's different sizes and they're super sharp so that's a little bit scary because I feel like I'm klutzy. And they have little like barbs. Like, I mean, when you feel the barbs, they, the barbs don't hurt. They're, they're very sharp at the top. Um, kind of see there's little barbs. And so you just stab it and you 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 stab it and, you stab it and, you stab it and it gets more compact 
And so for the flat ones, you know, then you turn it over and you do the other side and you kind of stab them in to make, get it to like really fit inside the mold. Um, I haven't done like a 3D animal yet, um, but basically you're making ovals or balls, little legs. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of excited to try and make a little animal. Um, what will I do with a little animal afterwards? I don't know. They're cute. But I was thinking I have so many like really the strong magnets that I got from, from making uh, needle minders. And um, I'm, you know, that I did when I was doing the resin, which I may go back to at some point. Um, I may not. I don't know. Uh, it's something that you kind of have to do it more in the summertime because it doesn't cure well when it's cold um, in my apartment you know I don't have heat on or whatever um, so in the summertime it's gonna work better so if I decide to go back to doing resin it'll be in the summer but anyway tangent I was thinking the little animals that if I put a, a needle on him like you know maybe I want it on his side or whatever depending on the animal that I make um, or on the tummy, whatever, um, they could actually be needle minders because you could then stick your needles in the felt um, and it, they would stick onto the, the project and they would be really light. It would just be the weight of the magnet because the, the felt, the wool itself is nothing. Um, so that's an idea, you know. Um, so anyway, so that was my new little project -y thing that I got this week and we'll see well you know I might uh do a couple animals and go that's it I'm good I'm done I'm not going to do this anymore I may be obsessed and I'll be doing a little animal every week I who knows you guys will see them because if I do them I will show them okay so the other bit of haul I got this week um I showed you the the little uh, diamond dots kit that I got and made and then um, my desk is like getting a little bit overloaded here I'm um, in that same thing I actually bought the diamond dots kit as a little add-on because um, I think I told you I kitted up Bellatrix that I'm gonna start next month I believe um, and there were three flosses that I wasn't able to get there was one DMC color and then two um, uh, Krynix. So the two Krynix are still on back order at one, two, three stitch. Um, so they're supposed to send them an email when those come in and then I guess I'll be forced to buy something else. Cause you know, I can't just get one little Krynix. Um, but basically I got an email saying that the DMC was in. So I ordered two skeins of that. I only think I, I need one, but I figure as long as I was ordering it. And so, you know, I'm not going to pay for shipping for a dollar twenty worth of floss. So I got the little diamond dots kit and then I got this little heart and hand uh, pattern, which I thought was really cute. And I might, I might add him in for my own. It came with a little white star bead and some color beads, which I think go around here. Um this in um to my cat mania as just like a small thing that I can actually get finished in cat mania um I just thought he was really cute and uh it says boo on his little tag I don't know that I would actually do that I might put a b because that would be for baggy that'd be cute just have a boo a b instead of boo And then I believe I told you last week that I had put in an order from uh, Be Stitch Me, um, and that came in. So I was trying to find fabric to uh, use for this chart that Michelle Bendy so kindly gifted me. Um, I did. I was supposed to pay for it, and then she just sent it as a. Um, I want to make you smile present after my mom passed. So. Um, I'm going to be doing this as part of my cat mania. I'm going to start it. 
um, I'm going to be using the MDA Mystical Diamond Art Flosses that uh, these were gifted to me from Amy from Obsessively Crafty, the proprietor of a Mystical Diamond Art, um, because she sent them to me so that I could show them to you and talk about her Floss of the Month Club a little bit, um, which she does five hand-dyed eight-yard skeins every month. And then if you are part of the club, they're only, it's only nine, $9.75, I believe. Um, and then with the shipping, it's like under $15. I think it's like 13 something um, for US shipping um, every month, which is a great price. And they're really, really pretty. As you can see, she has five, five new colors every month. And then if you don't wanna do it as a monthly club, after she sends out the monthly clubs, if she has sets that are extra, then I think she sells them for $10.75 for the set. Um, and then once those orders have gone out, then she will put singles in her shop and they're like $2 or something a skein. But yeah, they're really, really pretty. And she very kindly sent me like the last since she started doing it, which I think started in September, October. So I got several months worth here. Um, I haven't gotten March yet. I did figure out that the ones that were for February, oh, you know what? I separated them by color, so I can't show you everything. But um, I know this banana was one, which I think when I sh showed this on my channel two weeks ago, um, I didn't hold it up properly so you could see really how cool the variation on this is. So it's like the, this is like that. The inside of the banana is that like creamy banana-y color. And then we go to the outside, really yellow skin color. So that's actually a really cool color. And um, so that was part of February. This Grage, which is actually to me has like a slight lavender cast, which is really pretty. Um, that was part of February. Um, I th one of these pinks was, I think it was strawberry. Yeah, I think it was strawberry. So the February um, set was really variegated. Oh, I think purple was the other one. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this one, which, whew, look at that. So this was February as well. And I believe she still has February, so you should, you should go, go get them. Um, they're really pretty and they feel really nice. Um, I feel like really good quality. So anyway, I wanted to, I mean, I'm going to incorporate them just as, you know, here and there, but I really wanted to really do justice to them and pick a project that I could use just, just the mystical diamond art, um, threads. And then I got this from Michelle and I thought that's perfect. That's a perfect chart to use these threads on because there's a nice variety in here. And I, I've been looking at the chart and I think I'm going to, I'm going to make a few changes. Um, I'm going to do probably mostly as is, except I might change the color of the pods to be more um, uh, like a turquoise color. Um, there's a lot of colors down in the, in the landscape and everything. Um, the cat is charted as like a really dark blue. Um, I'm going to change it probably to one of the really dark purples. Um, and she does have some really pretty oranges in here, so I could do it as as it's charted or, you know, using that same color scheme, but I think I might want to uh, brighten up those pods and make them a little bit more like turquoise blue green. I don't know. Not 100% sure yet, but I have these really cool colors to play with and make a decision, but I did not have a fabric that I felt worked. Um, so I indulged and went on Be Stitch Me and I got three things that I thought might work and um, and now I get to pick. So uh, the one fabric, this one is a Lugana. 
I don't know if, you know, if it was the computer that I was looking at or what. The picture looked completely different than this. The picture was much, like, grayer, um, and it came in, it's like this kind of, it's a pretty, like, tobacco brown color. It's really not my color. I will be 100% honest. Um, so my first instinct is, is like, well, give it away. I'm going to hold on to it for a little bit because I found that, um, I make these big declarations and then, you know, a couple months later, it's like, well, you know what? That's going to work perfect for X, Y, Z. So I'm going to hold on to it for a little while. Um, I mean, the fabric is such great quality. Um, and I mean, it is a really pretty tobacco-y, camel-y brown color. Um, I just don't typically, I'm not typically drawn to, to this kind of color. Um, but as I said, it's great quality. And so I'm going to hold on to it because who knows, um, a chart might present itself, uh, maybe like a Mirabilia or something like that. And, you know, and this kind of background will be perfect for it. So, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to discount it, but this is a 32 count, uh, Lugana. And this didn't have a name, I don't think. Then... This is a contender. This is um, a 32 count opal linen in colorway blush. And I've said before, uh, linen is not my favorite uh, fabric to stitch on, but um, I do have to say that Brandy's linen is really, really good. I'm using that for Cats in the Rain and I've already told you I love that project. So, um, yeah, so her linen is very um, fine. It's not super slubby. I mean, there's slubs in it because it's linen. Um, so linen to me is not as easy to stitch on as even weave. But, um, but her linen is really pretty. And this color is really nice. And that, this could work for the, um, the feeling of the chart. Um, I think but I think I'm really leaning towards this one which is called Sleet and this is a Lugana and it's a 32 count opal Lugana in this really nice sort of subtly model gray again gray is not my usual color but it's got kind of some like pinky, purpley uh, modeling going on. Very light and subtle. Um, but I'm thinking that this one oops, might evoke the best feeling for this chart. So I don't even know if you can see it, but there's like a moon here. It's like really big and it's very tone on tone on the fabric. Um, and I kind of like that. Um, I'm afraid it might be a little bit difficult to stitch just because it's tone on tone. And we know that that's not always easy to do, but I was thinking, um, Amy has a couple flosses that I think might work for that kind of tone on tone move. So this is the great Grige, Grige, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but that we just got. So it's not as tone on tone, but I still think that could be really pretty. And then this one is called Latte. That could be really pretty for the big moon. Um, so yeah, so those I think are the two that I'm leaning towards as far as the color of the moon. Um, I'm dropping everything, you guys. All right, let it go. Or if I wanted to do this, that's really pretty too for the moon. So, okay, so I have a decision to make on that, but since I'm going to start this in May for Mania, I have a little bit of time to decide. Okay. 
and yeah. So I think that's a bit it for me. Um, God, I've gone a little bit long today. It's almost like an hour. Sorry, probably because I was just talking too much at the beginning. Um, hope you guys don't mind. But if you've been with me for this long, I've almost almost been doing uh, floss tube well over a year and a half so it's going to be two years in the end of June um and I'm actually let's see today's March 14th so it is my second year anniversary of stitching I started stitching in 2019 and I got my first kit on uh, I think it was March 12th 11th or 12th so I just hit my two year stitching anniversary um when I got my first cross stitch so that you know it's kind of exciting i feel like i've come a long way from you know getting my first counter cross stitch kit to all of these projects that i have um but anyway um i think that's going to be it for now i hope you guys have a great week uh stitchy week uh or otherwise whatever you do that makes you happy i hope you do it and enjoy doing it um and until i see you again next week uh, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.